I'm going to lie to you. And in the process of lying, I will tell you one truth. That is the basic premise upon which every monologue, theater, magic trick is based. You've come here to be lied to. Do not forget that. Picture this. A dictatorship is established. They place a cloth over the face of a teenage girl. Watch as they make a descendant disappear before your very eyes. The only thing left is a spirit whispering in your ear. Now picture this. A woman named Deborah comes into the UK. Her home country is Portugal, one of the only countries in the world to peacefully overthrow a fascist dictatorship. Watch as the army defeats Ustad Nov. As before your very eyes, protesters escape, somehow, all of them still alive. What ghosts are left of a bloodless revolution? No hungry corpuses crawling off the mouths of history, filling the bloodless lungs of time with demands of reparations and truth. This Deborah, let's call her a ghost. Or an actor. They are very much the same. What are you about to see? is a piece of fiction developed by Jane and I together. I will be playing a character and I do not endorse all of her decisions. So watch closely. This is the ghost of theater. This is the magic trick of a monologue. Close your eyes. I am 23 years old and today is a good day. Have you ever been skinny dipping? Have you ever felt the water on your skin like a thousand lips giving out a thousand kisses? Have you seen the waves moving like the mane of a great horse, like pale stallions canopling into oblivion, bone white sea foam frothing on the tip of the tongue of every curl and every ripple? There are 13 of us at the beach, and it feels, <laughs> well, it feels good. It feels amazing, actually. I can remember the last time that we were all together in one place, actually. Couldn't have happened since uni. Cara dares me to do it. <laughs> she grins, and then Nina, she puts her hand in her hands. <laughs> what? This isn't excitement enough for you? She says. Kara just grins. Oh, come on, Marina. It'll be fun. You're not afraid to show a little skin, are you? <laughs> I must be blushing bright red, but help. I mean, what else are your young years for if not making stupid decisions that you'll probably regret? Oh, well, skinny dipping. I'm also shameful as far as youthful indiscretions go. So, I, I do it. <laughs> I stand up to attention. And then slowly, and with a weird sort of gravitas, I take my swimsuit off until I'm naked before them. I can feel Kara's blazing dragon green eyes on me. But most importantly, I can feel the gray of Nina's eyes too. Do you two care to join me? <laughs> After a minute or two, they're as naked as I was and we're standing together playing this game of looking without being seen looking. Kara was diving, dipping beneath the water slick like a sea hide, like some sort of selkie her coat left on the shore, anchoring her to return it. She comes back up, gasping and giggling. She splashes water at us. Nina, however, and as usual, is the opposite. She's floating on her back, her gray eyes looking up at the gray clouds. And that was us. That was us three. That was us when we were as young as you were, 
once. Now, Jasmine, Ella, Ludmila, Rosa, Isabella, Alexandra, Phaedra, Claudia, and Idua, they all make their way into the water in the next hour or two. In the end, we're all standing there, naked in the sea. Afterwards, we go back to the beach. We lay our towels. We lay underneath the setting sun. Get dressed. And as the evening comes by, we get into our car. And we go to work. You know what? <laughs> Let's Zoom. Yes, we should have a Zoom. Oh my God, yes. Zoom food, Zoom drinks, <gasps> wine and Zoom move for short. Oh my God. I hate my friends. I mean, I legitimately load them with every fiber of this knitted woolen sweater that I call my body. I mean, I'm 52 years old and I hate my friends. <sighs> I mean, frankly, this whole thing was a mistake. You know, I slowly tune into their blabbing, their storm rain voices oh my god i swear it feels like solitary confinement i mean it's basically the same as prison <laughs> one of them says and the others laugh prison the cage that we put the bad people in i breathe a deep breath in my head i think of what I think of well, I think of Nina crying. I see this man with cruel, cold, hazel eyes. I see the car grinning. And I see the blood gushing out his neck. You know what? I turn the TV on. You know, this is later, much later long after I've Zoomed my friends. I'm already four, well, five glasses of wine deep. And then my heart stops. Because I see her. Those gray eyes. Nina Torin, the convicted terrorist, has been admitted to hospital today after contracting COVID-19. The woman had recently gone on hunger strike over supposedly unhygienic conditions in prison, claiming that prison guards were spitting into prisoner cells and denying them hand sanitizers and masks. Nina Torin is serving multiple consecutive life sentences for... I mute the newsreader. But I keep it on. They're showing pictures of her. Of her when she was in prison and in her trial, but... They're showing pictures of her when she was younger too. She looks so beautiful. Those gray eyes. I would have died for that great eyed girl. If only she would have let me. So, the truth. I suppose you've earned it by now. Stop me if you've heard this one before. 13 girls meet at a student radical movement, basically kids fighting against dictatorship. Eventually, the junta falls, democracy is established, hallelujah. Now watch as you break every promise, as before your very eyes, they show that they have nothing up their sleeves. As escape artists escape, leaving behind their shackles and their handcuffs floating in the sink of water that we call the law. We were at the beach once when I was 23. When we left, we put our bathing suits in the trunk of the car, in the boot. 
next to our guns and our knives and our cords. And... There was this man with dark hazel eyes. Phaedra was holding him down and Phaedra had already picked the lock and Ludmilla was on the lookout. I took a knife in my hand and, and, and I was shaking. Nina starts reading from a list of crimes. I mean, she had this encyclopedic knowledge of the dead. When she's finished, she looks at me and she nods. I place the blade against that murderer's neck and I cut one thin red line. Gurgles, spasms, kicks Kara, who was holding his feet down, and blood just pours out into her face, and she flinches. And he dies. After that, Nina comes up to me. She's smiling, and she kisses me. She kisses me chastely on the cheek. And in that moment, I knew. I knew that I would have done anything for this girl. After all, I had already killed for her. More times than I could count. They've caught her, you know, 10 years ago, you know. She didn't sold out any of us, but somehow they managed to find evidence against us, about half of us in her flat. She was always so careful, but you know, nonetheless. She's in prison now. They have put bars over her gray eyes. They have locked this firestorm of a woman in a concrete box, this locked up lockdown box. She's in a cage. She will die in a cage. Her cell, it, it has no windows. High security. And they don't even let her out. I mean, before, before this whole COVID thing, they would at least let her out for a few hours to walk with her inmates. And I can imagine her sitting there in a fluorescent orange up at the sky, so vast, so full of color. But they don't let them out. Oh no, not during a pandemic. And she's dying, you know, they say. They have their chained to a hospital bed, chained to a ventilator, this, this little slip of a 52 year old woman who was, I mean, she, she still is the most beautiful girl I have ever met. Car and I, we both loved her more than we ever told her. So, no Nina, she's in a cage now. Ludmila, Isabella, Clara, Claudia, and, and Nidoya, they're, they're, they're all in cages. But I'm not. Would it help? To make the world a better place if I were in a cage. I think of, I think of Nina dying all alone without me or any of the other 13 in there. And I think of Kara. Some girls, they never really make it home. Not really. So, no Nina, no Kara. It's just me left. After the dictatorship had fallen, we all got drunk. 
Cheers. The 13 of us, we were in the back room of a socialist bar and uh, <laughs> we were hammered. <laughs> we were just, I don't know what, 20 years old, crying because we had lost so much, you know. We had grown in fear of those fascists, those monsters. And we thought, well, <laughs> yeah, we thought we were free. There was a shitty old piano in the corner. Kara went to it. Then Nina followed her. She was smiling so wide that day. Kara started to play. And then she started to sing. And then Nina, and then Isabella, and then Rosa, and me. And then everyone else, until the 13 of us were singing. Singing for our freedom and singing for our lives. Una mattina mi sono alzato, oh bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, ciao, ciao. Una mattina mi sono alzato, io ho trovato l'invaso, oh partigiano. Portami via, oh bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, 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 partigiano, portami via, che io mi sento di morir. E se io muoio, oh partigiano, oh bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, 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 e se io muoio. O partigiano, tu mi devi seppellir. E seppellire la sua montagna. O oh, bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, ciao, ciao. E seppellire la sua montagna sotto l'ombra di un bel fiore. Tu le genti che passeranno, oh bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, 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 e le genti che passeranno, mi diranno che bel fiore, che stelle fiore del partigiano. Oh, bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, 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 che sta il fiore del partigiano, morto per la libertà. <laughs>